I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE theCUBE. We are on the ground here in San Francisco at Nginx headquarters. I'm here with Owen Garrett, the head of product at Nginx. Uh, welcome to on the ground here Thanks in San Francisco. Thank you, John. So what's the products? What's going on with Nginx? You guys are a leader right now. You're winning, you're doing great. You guys are growing. We've got a big conference coming up in September yeah. for developers. Um, and you guys have rapid growth. You get sucked into the, the tornado uh, that is DevOps, that is cloud, that is Docker containers. What's the base product and where is it going? Well, there's so much going on in the industry, John, as you know, so many players. And we always have to keep going back to our roots. We started as a product to help a, a website back in 2000s run faster, handle more transactions, more users, scale, give users a better level of service. And that's what we're all about, fundamentally. Whether you're building an old style monolithic application, whether you're looking at new tech like Docker, you're looking at new ways of building and scaling apps, our business is to make sure that whatever you're doing your app runs. It copes the traffic, it scales, it's secure, it's reliable, it's consistent, so that your users get the best possible level of service. Well, certainly the web has changed. The web has been mm -hmm. explosive. We were just talking with Gus, the CEO, about the developer challenges, yeah. and now we're living in what's now being the buzzword is digital transformation, mm -hmm. AKA the clouds here, DevOps is now mainstream. Yep. But now digital transformation also requires mobile, it requires mm -hmm. real-time information, it requires APIs, you know, and oh, by the way, I don't want a data center, I want to do it all in the cloud. So how has that changed right. your roots and how has it extended your, uh, your product? It means that the audience that we're talking to, that we sell to, that use our product is becoming more and more influential. It's the developers. The developers hold the keys to the kingdom now in a modern environment, in a modern business. They're the ones who create the unique value that makes that business different from its competition. They're the ones that roll out new services, that excite customers with the potential of what the business can do. And they're the community that we work with most closely. They take our technology and they use that to make sure that the services they build run as well as possible. They're delivered to the end users at a fantastic quality and level of service. And, and what are some of the products? Can you just outline some of the key products? Sure, so the core product is Nginx. It's an open source product it's a proxy and a web server. It began as a solution to put in front of an old legacy style application to make it scale and handle more traffic. And it's grown as application architectures have grown. So it's still fundamentally the same core solution. It's like a shock absorber. You put it in front of your web application. It handles all of the noise, the cruff, the unexpected traffic, the spikes that come off the internet. It smooths those out. It's like DDoS attacks, load yeah, balancing, DDoS. all the normal yeah. plumbing issues? All, all that sort of plumbing. It smooths it out so that your application runs in a safe, secure environment. It gets traffic from a trusted source. It can run as effectively and reliably as possible. And we deal with all the heavy lifting. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call on my, uh, my um, iWatch. Again, more technology coming in from wearables. Yeah. And literally a phone call came in. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah. But that's another example. Internet of Things is the edge of the network. Now there's new devices attaching. Tech, yeah. Does that change your, your dynamic at all? I mean, I'll see more touch points, more digital transformation. More, more and more touch points. Technology's everywhere. Your watch is phoning home. Your fitness tracker is phoning home. Soon your toaster will be phoning home. All of these services, they only work because the applications in, on the cloud or the data center are working. And that's our business. Okay, this is great. So then let's tie it back to DevOps because mm. you know you yeah. said developers, are the, are the main deal, the main main yep. man on campus, main woman on campus, if you will. Now, that, but they're also getting closer to the action. They're involved with customer interactions. They're getting closer to the solution, which means they're farther away from the data center, farther away yep. from the you know the, the developer environment. So mm -hmm. the question is, how do they become successful? And is that the DevOps movement that makes that happen? Because if I push the engineers out to the mm -hmm. edge to get close to the action, build the best solution possible, they got to yeah. be fast and it's got to scale fast. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the challenge for developers is getting bigger and bigger every day. No longer are they just code wranglers. You don't hire someone because they're the best possible at uh, bending a bit of Python code to solve a particular problem. Developers are strategic. Think of, if you're a developer, think of yourself, what value can you bring to the business? It's not just creating a solution from a spec. It's guiding the business on the architectures they should be using, the tools, the technologies they should be using, so that the business can continue to remain competitive in a really fast changing environment. Developers have a lot of, a good developer has a lot of strings to his or her bow. Not just the code and the technology, but the DevOps approaches and the best practices for building massively scalable high performance apps. Oh, and talk about what's going on in your community of developers. And, sure. and what's it like there? I mean, what's some of the, what's the vibe like? Um, 
Also, you guys are growing fast. You probably have a lot of happy customers because you yeah. a lot of money runs yeah. through those old web applications, whether they're all transactional based and web's more transactional. Yeah. But as mobile hits the scene, I mean, I was just driving in here to our, saw a promotion for the Oakland A's to get uh, mm -hmm. you know eighty nine dollars in July for all you know all the yeah. home games. Yeah. Mobile only offer. Yeah. So mobile now is doing transactions at a large mm -hmm. scale. How does how do you guys make developers happy? What are you guys doing to serve developers? So we focus on building the best possible, the lightweight, efficient engine for delivering your applications. Whether you're delivering it to a traditional desktop browser, you're delivering it to a mobile device, you're delivering it to, your to a phone or a watch, we focus on making that process work as smoothly as possible. You guys got a conference coming up too in September. Yeah. Talk about that and what's going to be like there? It's going to be you guys you know, sitting around drinking beer, you guys in the labs, you're writing code. What's happening? Or uh, all I, three. I hope there's going to be a bit of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not on that order. You never know. We've got, we've got industry experts. We've got end users coming, speaking about how they're using Nginx, how they're building applications, talking about the trends. So if you come, it's a great place to feel the pulse of the industry. We've got a large chunk of our core development team coming over. If you want to meet the guys behind Nginx, the people who made it the product it is, the conference is the place to come and see. It's a fantastic place to network, to learn about not just our products, but also the ecosystem of products around it, the partners that we work with who make sure that they have platforms and hardware and technology that allow you to manage and monitor and run Nginx at the best possible speed. Okay, so pretend for a minute I'm a developer. Sure. Okay, and uh, I don't know about you guys, and mm -hmm. all I want to I want to get some beer. I want to hang out with some cool people. I want clean yeah. code, and mm -hmm. I want to have a community. Can you guys talk? Can you talk about those dynamics for the developers out there that are evaluating, you know, who to hang out with, who to partner with on the code, and all and, and whatnot? Sure. Well, the conference is a fantastic place to meet the guys and girls behind Nginx and see why it is the way it is. Understand the ethos, the philosophy the engineering precision that, get, that goes into that product. 150,000 lines of code, it's not a big product, but every line of code is there for a reason and has been scrutinized again and again and again. But around that, we've got a really rich ecosystem of developers who build plugins for Nginx, who build tools and applications that run on top of Nginx. Come, get some inspiration. Learn about how other people are using Nginx to help their applications scale and run at performance. Yeah, developers can be fickle too. I mean, I'm you know, I mean, you know, I've been a developer in my past life, but I you know, we work with developers. They care about kind of what's in it for them too. They mm -hmm. want to have a good community. Yeah. Obviously, and beer, as, as I mentioned, or tea is the two yeah. favorite drinks of choice in the developer community. But more importantly, they need distribution for their solutions. They want a quality platform. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what's in it for me if I'm a developer working with Nginx? So if you use Nginx at the core of your application to deliver that application, that gives you. Well, I guess the best example is someone I talked to a little while ago. They said they were responsible for the operations for their application, the delivery of the app, and they dropped an Nginx, and after looking at it and monitoring it for a few days, they said quite confidently, that's one less thing that could possibly wake me up at night. So reliability. Reliability, consistency, performance, security, no matter what is coming in. That's what we're about, that's what we deliver. So I always ask the question, you know, good software enables value. Yep. What do you guys enable your customers to be successful at? We enable our customers to do their job, to deliver their business value to their customers without having to invest heavily in the infrastructure, without having to become experts in application delivery. We take the knowledge that we have learnt from 10 to 15 years worth of experience, the battled hardened lessons that we've learnt with our product as it's been deployed to drive some of the world's busiest websites. We take that, we package it up, we give you a software solution in the form of Nginx open source or Nginx plus if you want the additional confidence of support, um, the security of managed updates and additional features. We take that, we package it up, we give that to you as a solution so that you can benefit from that experience without having to go through all the learning processes yourselves. What is microservices? And this is a, you guys are really doing well in this microservices yeah. area. What is microservices? I get 10 different definitions from everybody. But I mean, it seems to be the same, the same pattern. It's the glue, it's distributed applications, it sounds like you know, distributed yeah, networks in sure. a way. What is microservices? Sure, so m maybe a good way of looking at microservices is trying to understand what problem does it solve. People used to build applications as a monolith. It's like an oil tanker. You want to change course of an oil tanker, you've got to plan that. You've got to map it out. It's something that takes, well, in the case of an application, it can take weeks or months to make a change to a monolithic application. Web scale industries in really competitive environments 
couldn't suffer that speed of development. They had to go faster. Amazon, Netflix, Adobe, other pioneers in microservices reasoned that the way to fix it wasn't to build an oil tanker, it was to build a fleet of speedboats. Each speedboat can run at its own pace, can change course as it needs. So, with that analogy, they started to take their monolith and they broke it down into smaller services. Smaller services that could be developed independently by different teams using the tools that that team felt most comfortable with. And when they did that, they realized a much greater degree of agility. They could roll out changes for the application. They could test it more quickly. They could go from doing releases every couple of weeks to dozens of releases a day. That's right. Oil tankers also hit icebergs. And you can look at one speedboat, hits an iceberg, it's not going to be a big spill, will it? Yeah, yeah. No, no one wants to hit an iceberg, <laughs> but it happens. Yeah. Monolithics um, will hit an iceberg, that's a problem. You yeah, know, monolithics, microservices will hit, hit an iceberg, but if one microservice goes down, that generally doesn't take your application out. You've got isolation, you've got reliability, you can recover from that. Oh, and Garrett, head of product at NGX here on the ground in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier from theCUBE. Thanks for watching, thanks for your sharing that information.